Good afternoon. Thank you very much for coming. Um, today I'm going to talk about anomaly detection in R. This is a joint work with Rob Hyman and Kate smith Myers. Um, at present, there's a fairly rich variety of R packages uh, supporting anomaly detection tasks using different analytical techniques. And during our review, we came across with 160 R packages with anomaly detection capabilities. But among these many R packages, most of these R packages mainly focus on these two data scenarios, anomalies in temporal data and anomalies in high dimensional data. When it comes to anomalies in temporal data, we can basically divide this topic into three parts called contextual anomalies, collective anomalies, and the ter third context is anomalous identifying anomalous series within a large collection of series. I think uh, our next speaker, Daniel, will talk about these two topics. So I'm going to focus more on this topic. And when it comes to high dimensional data, um, again, we can think about many uh, different possible types of anomalies. And these anomalies can be basically divided into three parts called global anomalies, local anomalies, and microclusters. So these microclusters are the small clusters with very small number of anomalous points. And when it comes to the existing R packages, most of them can handle these global anomalies and local anomalies, but sometimes they fail to detect microclusters because of the masking problem. And in this talk, I'm going to concentrate on these two data scenarios, and I'm going to introduce you to three new R packages. Let me start from our first package, Stray, Stray Stream Anomaly. Um, in this, um, I'll walk you through the algorithm first. Now, um, during our review, we came across with a package called HD Outlier Package. It is developed for anomalies in high dimensional data. HD Outlier Package is a very powerful algorithm with many different features. But we came across with some limitations with this package. And through this tray, we try to address those limitations and we try to extend our algorithm so that it can handle streaming data. Um, so our focus is on high dimensional data, but I'm going to use this simple example so in order to give you the basic idea behind this algorithm. So let's take this simple example. Here I have some typical data, and here I have one obvious anomaly. So we start the anomaly, we start the algorithm by normalizing the columns of the data. Um, this is to prevent the variables with large variances having disproportional influence on the Euclidean distance. Because in Stray, we use distances as the primary source of information to detect anomalies. Once we normalize this data set, then we calculate the nearest neighbor distances. So for, this, for each and every observation, we calculate the nearest neighbor distance. Now, when, since this is somewhat far away from the typical points, I get a very large distance for this. And for the remaining points, I get a very small distance. So with using that information, I can clearly pick this as an anomaly. This seems perfect, but there's a problem. Imagine there's a problem with using nearest neighbor distance. Imagine we have a data set like this. Now, here I have a microcluster. These few points are somewhat far away from the typical points. Um, but when I calculate the nearest neighbor distance, since this is an isolated point, I'm getting a very large nearest neighbor distance. For the remaining points, even though they are far away from the typical behavior, I'm getting a very small nearest neighbor distance because they have their own nearest neighbors. So if I use nearest neighbor distance as the information to identify anomalies, now my algorithm fails. So how to overcome this problem? This is why we try to do use, which is what we did in Stray. Instead of using nearest neighbor distances, we select the k nearest neighbor distance with the maximum gap. For each and every point, we calculate k nearest neighbors. Now k is a user-defined parameter. And we try to identify the k nearest neighbor distance with the maximum gap. For example, for this point, the first nearest neighbor distance gives me the maximum gap. But for this point, the fifth nearest neighbor distance gives me the maximum gap. So now these k nearest neighbor distances with the maximum gap act as an anomalous score. So for each and every point, I'm getting outlier score. Now the problem, now next, our next challenge is how to define an anomalous threshold to label these points as anomalies or not. This is where we use extreme value theory. We use extreme value theory to define an anomalous threshold. 
Um, so this is one advantage in our algorithm. But since we are using extreme value theory, now these anomalous thresholds have a prob valid probabilistic interpretation. OK, so that's the basic idea behind this proposed algorithm. So this framework is implemented in the stray package. Um, using this find HD outlier, you, we can uh, calculate, we can identify these anomalies. We pass the high dimensional data. Under method, you can select a preferred outlier scoring technique. The default is the k nearest neighbor distance with the maximum gap. And as the third parameter, we, uh, give, give, we give the user to select the preferred k nearest search uh, algorithm. This is because um, when we are dealing with high dimension, very large data set, we use some fast approximate k nearest neighbor search algorithms. OK, so that's the basic idea behind this stray algorithm. And now I'm going to explain how we use this algorithm to identify anomalous time series within a large collection of time series. This is one motivation for this problem. So here, what you can see is the Sydney Harbour Bridge, one of the most famous iconic landmarks in Australia. Now, um, government has taken action to protect this. Where they, used 200 and, where they used large number of sensors to measure the vibration in metal. So their main focus is to identify any maintenance defects, defects such as rust or concrete cracks. So now there are very, there are, there's a large collection of sensors that are run in parallel, and each sensor generates a time series. So this whole collection gives me a large collection of time series. And if I can identify the anomalous time series within this large collection, then I can locate this type of maintenance effect. That's the idea. So now we have an idea about this problem. Now let's see how we tackle this problem through this package. For this, now we have a large collection of time series. We, after that, we use feature-based representation of time series. From each and every time series, we extract some features. And we try to convert what we're actually doing by extracting features. What we're actually doing is we convert our original problem in the temporal data context into a high-dimensional data problem. From each and every time series, I'm extracting 14 time series features. So I'm getting a high dimensional data space with 14 dimensions. Altogether, I have, here I have 100 time series, so what, um, I, I'm getting 100 points here. Each point in this high dimensional space corresponding to a single time series in my original collection. So what you can, hear, what you can see here is a random projection of this high dimensional space. OK, once we, now we have developed our stray algorithm for high dimensional data. Now we have a high dimensional data set. So after we get this high dimensional data space, we apply stray algorithm to identify the anomalies. Um, I'm sorry. Yes. After, um, then we apply the stray algorithm to identify the anomalies. So to deal with the streaming data context, we use a sliding window model. So once we think about one model, now it acts as a batch scenario. We can apply, we apply stray algorithm for each and every window. OK, so a quick summary of our method. Now here we have a large collection of time series, and we have two anomalous time series here. We project that into our feature space. And these two outliers are now corresponding to these anomalous time series in my large collection. But there's a problem with this method. Sometimes we cannot expect this type of a clear separation between the typ typical points and the anomalous points. For example, here we have a data set. Um, we obtained this data set using a fiber optic cable attached to a fence, and this black blob corresponding to an intrusion attack. And this is the feature space of this uh, uh, large collection of time series. And when we think about this one, if we calculate the nearest neighbor distances, now I cannot see a clear separation between the typical points and the outline points. But with respect to density, we can clear, see a clear separation between the typical point and the outline points. That is the information that we are going to use in our second package. Odd stream, odd stream, outlier detection in data streams. So in this package, so stray algorithm is an unsupervised algorithm, but uh, this odd stream algorithm is a semi-supervised algorithm. So we start our algorithm using a training data set. Uh, now, in this, um, since this is a semi-supervised algorithm, we need a training data set that, is, that are free from outliers. 
So we start from that and we extract, we get the same data features, data space, feature space. And once we obtain this feature space, then the dimensionality is further reduced um, by applying principal component analysis. So again, we have 600 time series, I'm getting 600 time points. And uh, now this part, this area, represents the typical behavior of the system. So once we obtain this, uh, this one, then we try to define a boundary for the typical behavior. This is where we use extreme value theory. We apply extreme value theory and try to define a boundary for the typical behavior. Once we define the boundary, then the online phase is activated and test for newly arrived data. What we are doing is from the new data set, we extract features and project it into the same 2D PC space and check whether using our threshold, the boundary for the typical behavior, we claim the point, new points as anomalies or not. That's the whole idea of this odd stream package. And we also have some framework to deal with concept drift. I'm not going to go into detail. This is um, available through our paper in JCGS. Um, the third one, I'm going to give you an example of how we tackle uh, another problem related to water quality data, how we use Stray to handle this problem. In this problem, our, our, prob our challenge was to detect technical issues in the sense equipments. Um, now, these technical issues can be, uh, can be caused due to low battery power by falling of the probes, errors in the calibration, rust, and some other kind of issues with the sense equipments. So this is a data set obtained using in-situ sensors, in-situ water quality sensors. And when we got this data set, we thought, OK, there are so many anomalies. We thought most of these represent uh, collective anomalies, and we thought some, there are some point anomalies. But now our challenge is to identify the technical outliers. After having some um, discussions with the water quality experts, we realize that there are only few outliers in this data set. Now, we call it as an outlier, only it caused by a technical issue. So this was the challenge. Now, how can we extract these points, this type of normal behavior, this type of behaviors? Their main focus is to improve the quality of the data. So what we did was we tried to handle this problem. You, we first wanted to see whether we can tackle this problem um, using our existing algorithms, but we couldn't. So we introduced a new package called Odd Water Outlier Detection in Data from Water Quality Data. So this is how we handle this. Once we got this data set, you, with, uh, after we, we had several conversations with our water quality experts, and then we try to identify um, the data features that differentiate outlying instances from the typical behavior. For example, um, according to the water quality experts, the sudden changes are mostly due to the technical issues, and the, uh, normal, the natural processes are normally slow. So once we got this one, then we observed the high dimensional data space. And this is the high dimensional data space that we got from those three variables. And we noticed that there, there's no clear separation between the target outline points and the typical points. Now, then our next attempt was to apply some transformation to make the outline st instances stand out in the, uh, stand out in the transformed data space. For this, we did not blindly apply transformations. All these transformations that we use were inspired from the data features. Uh, for example, a sudden isolated spike is an outlier, but a sudden rise with a gradually decaying tail, it's not an outlier. Now, to differentiate these two, we use first different series. We use first different series. And also, we saw that these time series are irregular time series. To handle that, we use first derivative. Likewise, all these transformations were inspired from the data features. And once we apply those transformations, we notice that our one-sided derivative, first derivative transformation can, um, gives us a clear separation between the outlying points and the target points. So now that we have a clear separation between the outlying points and the typical points, so now we can apply our stray algorithm to identify these anomalies. This is how we tackle this problem, but this is an application specific one, but we need to think about how to automate this process of selecting proper transformations for the other applications. 
Okay, what next? For stray, we hope to improve the visualization of anomalies in the high dimensional data. For stream, at the moment, it can handle only one dimensional multivariate data. That means we assume that from each and every sensor, we are getting only one measurement. But there are sensors where we can get multiple measurements. In such a situation, we are getting a tensor data set. So our next attempt is to improve, extend this so that it can handle multi dimensional multivariate data streams. And for, in at water, we hope to extend it so that it can consider the spatiotemporal correlation structure on the branching river networks. That brings my talk to the end. Um, you can find the slides from my website. Thank you very much. One, time for one quick question. Very quick one. Okay, I'll ask, um, how do you know there's no outliers in your training data? How would you know there's no outliers within your training oh, data? Okay, we had that. The, uh, that is uh, one challenge that we got. It's sometimes hard to find um, a proper typical data set, a representative sample from the typical data set. So we uh, had some discussions with our industrial partner. And also, I need to mention that now I'm saying that we need to have a representative data set of the typical behavior. But the we that we did but. We do, it doesn't mean that we need to have all the representative samples from the, all the typical possible type of typical behaviors. The idea is to have a warm-up data set to get the initial parameters of the model, and we have another framework uh, to adjust to the concept drift. So it doesn't matter whether you have few anomalies in your training data set. Thank you.